Well, hello, and welcome to my latest project. In this episode, I'm going to attempt to make a knife called a Bowie knife, or Bowie, or Bowie. I've heard it pronounced so many different ways over the years. Anyway, it's a classic American design attributed to the legendary Jim Bowie. Um, and it's really for hunting, for fighting, for everything that you can imagine. It's a multi-purpose knife. It's a chunky knife. And I'm going to try something which I've never done before, which is a stacked leather handle. That's the bit that's making me quite nervous, to be honest. Anyway, I hope you enjoy it. And please, if you do, subscribe, like, comment. I love your interactions. Thank you so much. As you can see, I've already cut out the, the steel. Um, I didn't film bother filming the you know, making the template and then cutting it out because, you know, it's kind of boring. The only thing I would say is this is the first knife that I have drawn out by hand. Uh, I not, you know, used a template from the internet or anything. I wanted this Bowie to look the way I wanted it to look. Um, this bit is still much too wide. I'm going to cut that down. That is where I'm going to cut out the threaded portion um, to go into the pommel. This is a slightly exaggerated um, gap for the uh, bolster, but it's certainly the thickest blade I've ever made, or I'm trying to make. It's four and a half mil thick. I want this to be a beast. I've enjoyed me. I've now made probably a couple of dozen knives, and I just wanted to test myself a bit with something chunkier, you know, something that would maybe survive the forged and fire test. <laughs> Let me see if I can get more light on this. Now let's see. 
if that hardened. Oh yeah. That is skating. Hurrah. Okay, so the blade has now come out of the temper. I've given it a quick clean up with a conditioning belt, um, mainly so I can test the hardness. Um, it's still a bit rough, but it should still give me an indication. So I'll start with a 50, let's be pessimistic. Nothing. 55. No, still good. 60. Uh, that's it. So it's somewhere between 55 and 60. Um, I was hoping for over 60, but I think that's already pretty hard. So now the next stage of the project is that I need to start making the bolster uh, or the guard on the knife. Um, and one of the difficulties when you're trying to make something like that is if you've never made this knife before, it's very difficult to gauge the proportions exactly. With my Japanese knives, it's quite easy because I just relate, you know, to the other ones I've made and I know what size to make everything, but I've never made a Bowie knife. Um, so I'm going to do a bit of guessing. I compared it to another knife I made, which had a handle that was too thick, which was 30 mil wide. Um, and I've decided to make this one 25 mil wide um, and then give some shape to the handle to really improve the grip. And I got this piece of uh, brass. It is, it's 25 mil wide, which may have influenced my decision a bit. And it's, six and a half mil thick. Now, originally I was gonna make a thicker guard, uh, but I'm gonna start with this. If I don't like it, I'll just start again. It doesn't matter. I'll just use a different piece of brass. So what I've done is I have put an oval shape on it, which I will then shape. Okay, so that's the next bit.
tricky things actually is to gauge how many squares I need in order to make the length I want. Um, I think that's about right. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to start punching holes in these and then um, putting them on and we'll see what it looks like. So the next challenge I had, <clears throat> of course, was to punch out holes for these squares to go over the tang of the knife. Um, so what I did is I got some 10 millimeter brass uh, tube. I sharpened the edges and then squashed them in the vise to create an oval. And it worked fine for the first go, second started getting rubbish, third unusable. And because, as you can tell, the brass started deforming quite badly with the impact. Now, granted, the, the brass is probably too thin, but that's all I could get. So that's done with brass. So I then proceeded to make the ugliest thing I think I've ever made in my life. Um, I've got a, a, a rod of silver steel. Um, on the lathe, I brought it down to about 12 millimeter. Then I drilled through, um, leaving a, um, a gap all the way through so that I can push the, the plugs out. Um, and let's see if, if that works any better. It's a bit tight. Mm. I'm not sure I would enjoy doing that. Um, it's better the other way. If I'm going to enjoy doing that, working with a ton of epoxy. Um, but anyway, it works and it's not deforming. So I also, I must say, I hardened it, hardened it, uh, tempered it. <laughs> I can't speak English this morning. Um, and yeah.
All right, so here we are the next day. Um, I keep thinking it looks a little bit like a like food. It looks like a kebab to me, but anyway. Um, and now comes the really tricky bit where I'm going to have to start shaping this thing. Right, so I'm in the process of, sh of shaping the handle. And I've got to tell you, this is a nightmare. Uh, I really kind of wish I'd made it out of wood now, to be completely honest. It feels nice, but it's a nightmare to shape. Uh, the belt grinder, forget about it. It just clogs up the belts and doesn't really do anything. So I've cut a lot of it ba back on the bandsaw. Um, and I've actually cut too much. I'm a bit upset, actually, to be honest. Um, it's now a bit thin in the handle. I mean, it's still not bad, but I wanted to give it a beautiful shape. And I think, anyway, I think I messed it up. So what I'm going to go back to is something I've seen in another YouTube video. Um, it's using a rasp. Uh, it's going to take time, but I think that's going to be the best solution. So wish me luck. This is the bit I've been really looking forward to. Um, it's dyeing the handle. Now, <clears throat> a couple of things to point out. First thing is I cleaned it, the handle very carefully with acetone because I've handled it quite a lot and we don't want any grease on it to try and dye it evenly. And the other thing is, although it may look odd that I'm not going to um, mask off the brass, so I've done a test and it cleans off incredibly easily with again acetone so I'm just gonna start dyeing the handle and it'll probably take a few coats
I'm actually really pleased with it. I, I know I'm no perfectionist and it is not perfect. Um, it feels phenomenal in the hand. It's a big, strong blade. Um, it's hard. I got it to just under 60 Rockwell. It's very sharp and the balance is gorgeous. I'm really, really enjoying that. Um, it's got flaws and if I do it again, um, the handle is too long and the uh, leather um, is too thin. It's not actually for me, it feels great in the hand, but aesthetically it's kind of a asparagus looking handle really. I, I would like it to have been a bit, a bit wider in this direction. Um, but having said that, uh, I'm really pleased with how the, um, the guard and the pommel came out. So generally speaking, I'm really pleased with it. Would I want to make a stacked leather handle again? I don't think so. It's a nightmare. Although having said that, every time I say something's a nightmare, I'll try it again. But um, anyway, I'm, I'm really pleased with it. And thank you for following it if you've been watching it. And I hope it'll inspire you to have a go. This is the first knife that I didn't do from a commercial template. I, I kind of drew it out and designed it myself, hence the crazy long handle. But anyway, part two will be making the sheath. So I hope you'll follow me with that. Thanks so much for watching.